Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at how we can actually make API requests and send information to this API. So actually making post requests or HTTP post requests. And therefore I have created this little demo application that lets me create a new message. Once I hit send, this is going to be sent to a quick little API that I created for this video. And when I reload my page here on the left, I get a new message right here. So we're making HTTP post requests and I'm just going to use uh, my favorite application for things like that called Rested to illustrate what we're doing. So my API is running. Uh, at localhost and port 8080. And um, what I can do here in rested is configuring what kind of request I'd like to send. So uh, first of all, I'm going to check a, a quick get request using my extension or my endpoint API and messages. And once I send this request, I get a nice little response here telling me with the code 200 that everything is okay. We're receiving this as JSON code and I'm receiving it right here. So I have an ID for my message and I have this message key that gives me actually my message. So if we'd like to do this the other way around, we're actually using the same API endpoint that I've created, but we're using a post request. And what I'd like to do is uh, send some information to this API. And what I have to do here in Rested is choosing the correct encoding format. So we're using a JSON encoded format. And what we're going to send is one parameter, which has the key message and the value is for example, a second message. And once I send this to my API, I get another response of okay. We're again having the content type of application JSON, and we also get um, the message that we send as a response. So once I reload my page, as you can see, there is my response. And so that we do not have to do this using rested, um, I'm going to show you how to do this in an iOS application. If you're interested to learn how to actually write an API such as this and the, um, the associated application or website that comes with it, then you can use the link in the video description below to actually enter your email um, so that I can notify you uh, once my Vapor course is ready. So everything I did here with the API is created in Vapor or with the Vapor framework and Xcode and Swift. Very cool if you're interested to learn how to create an API such as this and also how to actually make this secure because this is uh, everything but secure. We shouldn't, you shouldn't be able to uh, just send a post request to an API without, uh, without authentication. That's, um, uh, that, that's, that's not the best thing to do. Uh, but anyways, um, this is just for demo purposes. So I just didn't uh, put too much effort into it just to show you how to actually make post requests um, to an API. But if you're interested to learn how to do this the right way and how to actually create an API web application and so on uh, with Swift and Vapor, then just enter uh, your email using the Google form in the video description below. And to actually create this fine little sample app that I have here, I'm going to show you the Xcode project that I am using just a very simple view controller here with this one tiny little button in the center. And um, the view controller also only has this one IB action that is associated with the button. Once you hit the button, um, I'm creating an alert controller that has a text field. Um, you have a cancel button, you have a send button. And um, once you press send, we're checking if we actually have a uh, text entered into our text text field and then we're displaying the alert controller and actually here we're going to make the request to our API um, but uh, of course we are having this API request struct where we have the proper code to actually outsource the API request and um, what we also have is a little 
uh, message class that is um, the model for our message. Of course, it's a very simple uh, model. We just have this message string or this message uh, text. We have the ID, we have an initializer, and the most important aspect for this whole thing is that this message class is codable. You have actually encodable as a protocol, and you have decodable as a protocol. And codable gives you the abilities of encodable and decodable so that you can both encode things to send them to an API and also receive things and decode things that you get from an API. So for example, JSON encoded. So what we are going to do now is opening up our API request. Uh, we're using Swift 5 here, so I have just um, defined an API error enumeration where I have just defined um, some error cases that I could think of. There could be more. They could also be more expressive, but for this tutorial, it'll do. And what we're going to do here in this struct is just defining a resource URL. Uh, we're initializing our um, API struct with an API endpoint in that case. Messages, you could also have, uh, depending on your API, something else. Uh, but obviously we're having um, the API running at localhost port 8080, API and so on. And just also notice that I am using a, a standard HTTP um, connection here, so this is not secure. And what I had to do to make this work um, is actually allow arbitrary loads, just added this key and the key uh, app transport security settings in my info plist so that I can really work with that standard HTTP request um, because this is a requirement if you're not using secure HTTPS connections. So with that, we have the initializer that actually initializes also our resource URL that we're now going to use to create a safe function for our messages to be saved. And what we want to do here is actually save a message. So this is off type message. And we also again need a completion handler or a completion closure, which is escaping. Uh, to learn more about that, you can also check out my last video where you can learn uh, all of that in a little more detail, but just with a get request and not with a post request. So since we're working with Swift 5, we have this awesome uh, result type that we can use to actually return or to include a message in case of a success and an API error if something went wrong. So very neat type that we can use here. And we actually just want to return void here. And what our function does is actually pretty simple, but um, at many points we could run into errors. So we're using um, do uh, and try and catch here. So first of all, uh, what we need to do is create a URL request. So just using URL request and initialize that with our resource URL. And now we come to the interesting part um, that you don't have to do actually when you just create a get request. Uh, because what we have to do is actually define that we'd like to use an HTT method of, uh, HTTP method of post. And what we also have to do is set the HTTP header field content type um, and set this to application JSON. So, um, this is the first, uh, these are the first two things that we're going to do, taking our URL request and uh, lowercase uh, u, URL request, set the HTTP method to post. And then we're going to use the URL request again, add a value for a specific HTTP header field. And we're using application uh, JSON for the field um, content type. So this, these are the first two steps. And now what we have to do is define the HTTP body of our URL request. And this is going to include our message to save as JSON code. So we are using the URL request again and defining the HTTP body in this case. And this is where things could go wrong. So we're trying to use the JSON encoder 
and call the encode function and this can throw an error. We're going to deal with that later. But what we'd like to encode is our message to save. And as you can see, this requires an encodable type, but since we're using codable, we could use both or we could encode and decode our message. Since um, we are just going to send information to our API and not retrieve information, what we could also have done is just used encodable right here. So this would also have worked just fine. So now we have our HTTP body. Now we have to request, but we still have to work with that request and actually um, make this request using a data task. Uh, therefore, I'm defining a data task using a URL session shared and then using a data task with our URL request. And once this is finished or we get a response, we get a data or we get a data object back and we get a response back and also an error object, which we are not going to use in that case. And um, now we have to actually ensure um, that there is an HTTP response. We have to check the response status is 200, which would mean it's okay. Um, and this is the code returned by our API upon a successful save. So uh, we need also, this is the last thing we need to do, ensure um, there's data in our response body. So we're going to check that using a simple guard let statement using HTTP response and try response, try to assign the response, cast that to an HTTP URL response. Then we also need to check if the HTTP response, response and its um, status code is equal to 200, which would mean okay. And then we also need to check if we get JSON data, just assign the data object. And if something fails here, then we're going to call our completion handler and just tell it that there was a failure and that we had a response problem. And here uh, we're actually missing a P. Um, so in that case, we do have a problem. We cannot really continue, which means that we also need to return and do not proceed with our function. But if we get all of this information that we actually need, we can do another do try catch block right here. So I'm creating a message message data object here using a, a try statement to actually catch errors that come from JSON or from the JSON decoder and then decode our message. And this only works because uh, we have actually um, made our message type codable, which means again, decodable and encodable. And if we only had given it the encodable um, protocol, then we could not. And if we just adopted the encodable protocol, then we could not have decoded it right now. But whoops, uh, what we'd like to put here is our message type and self from our JSON data, which means that we now have message data and we can call our completion handler and tell it that this was successful and pass along the message data object. So this is all we need to do here. And now we can start catching our arrows. So here again, we have a completion, but with a failure here, we would have a decoding problem. Um, so this is the first one. Now we have our data task, which not yet resumed. So calling the resume function on the data task. All right. And the last error that we have here is that we're trying our encoding here. And um, this is actually something let's just instead of other problem, let's just say encoding problem and then also catch at a catch block right here and call completion failure with an encoding problem. All right, so this is actually what we have to do 
to uh, make a post request in that case. Um, and the whole magic actually happens here. Uh, when we set the HTTP method, uh, we set the HTTP header field content type to JSON in our case. Um, we are working with um, the JSON encoder here to actually take our uh, message text and encode it as JSON and then send it to our API. And then we just uh, react to the different scenarios here. And in the best case, we get a success message. Everything works fine. And we can actually, again, display um, the data that we have received or do something else. And this is what we're going to do in our view controller uh, because we still have to call this function. So we have a text here, which is going to be the message that we'd like to send, uh, but we do not have is a message object uh, at this moment. So I'm going to initialize a new message object which receives um, the message as a string. So I just pass along the text that I get from my text field in the alert controller. And now I can just create my post request and initialize it with my API request uh, struct and a endpoint which is messages in my case. And now all we have to do is use the post request and hit the save function. So here I can pass along the message object that I've just created. And for the completion handler, I just have to add some curly braces here. And then what we get here is a result object, um, which we can switch through. So I'm switching through my result. So we have the case. Uh, success, which gives me a message object, or which should give me a message object, which would mean that I could just print something like the following message has been sent. Just pass this through here using string interpolation, accessing the message object uh, or the message property of my message. Uh, we could work on the naming here. And the second case is failure, which would give me an error object. And here I can also print uh, an error occurred and just pass along this object right here. Uh, and now our um, result or our switch um, through the result object is also exhaustive and we can actually run our application in the simulator, bring up um, our website here to access the API and see what we've actually done. And here we have the simulator. And now let me just quickly press on send message. Um, and now let's say a cool message, send this. And as you can see, the following message has been sent, a cool message. And in Safari, if I reload my page, I get a cool message. So this was a basic and simple approach to actually sending information to an API using a post request. I hope this is helpful to you. I thank you so much for watching. Subscribe to this channel to not miss any new tutorials and I'll see you in the next one.